This is Actar's Reviews, from anime to figures and beyond. Hey, this is Actar and this is one of the most requested videos since I began reviewing figures in 2007. A tour of my room. Yes, I'm finally doing it. I predict that this is going to be a pretty long video, so I won't really ramble on too much during this introduction. One of the reasons I'm only doing this now is because I've always had the feeling that I needed to present my room in as complete a state as possible. However, because new figures constantly pop up, old items keep getting sold, and displays constantly change, I realized that this was never going to be possible. So instead, I'm viewing this as a time capsule of sorts, so when I look back, I'll know how my room looked like in 2014. Also, I feel that this is a great way to talk about and introduce some of the items that I didn't manage to review or wasn't really deserving of a full length review, such as trading figures, miscellaneous merchandise and replicas. Now as a disclaimer, I have to warn you that it's not completely organized and I do beg for your forgiveness. I can't cover everything in detail, so if you spot a figure that I glossed over or you would like to know more of, simply ask me in the comments below. So without further ado, welcome to my humble abode. Alright, to start things off, this is the door to my room on which is a lovely Madoka wall scroll which is above a Sailor Mercury wall scroll that a friend got for me. Yes, I do love Sailor Mercury. The entire wall is pretty much dedicated to wall scrolls and posters as there needs to be space for the door to open. To the left, there are a number of Keon posters followed by Lucky Star posters and Negima posters. Right on the top is a custom replica of Yomi's sword from Gari Zero, an excellent show that you guys should check out if you haven't already done so. Below that, I have a couple of Dakimakura covers. I have no space for the actual hug pillows, so I've hung up the covers as wall scrolls. The one on the left is Ikaros from Sora no Otoshimono, and the one on the right is Fate Testerosa from the Nanoha franchise. Right in the middle is a gorgeous Haruhi wall scroll that I got at a convention. Sadly, it's gone slightly wonky thanks to the refraction caused by the glass, but it does feature the 5 members of the SOS Dan. I simply love wall scrolls and posters that have the entire main cast on it, so those are the ones that I usually spring for. Below that is a relatively small card Captor Sakura poster that I've had for eons. The elephant in the room is of course this display case. If you're wondering why it's in the middle of nowhere, it's because I have absolutely nowhere else to put this for the time being. On top is my replica Zero helmet from Code Geass, a Ramiel 6 angel figure with a glowing red angel core LED, and a ton of Cubase including a life-sized vinyl figure. The case is made up entirely of magical girl figures. As you might notice from here on out, I try my best to group items together by their genre, series or figure type. Here we have GSC's Madoka and Homura, the Figma figures will be going in there later, Mega House's Hard Catch Precure figures, and Alter's Fate and Nanoha movie first versions. I don't usually complete entire lines of completed PVC figures due to their price, but Hardcash Precure is my absolute favourite Precure series and the SH Figure Arts figures really sucked. At the foot of the case are a couple of unopened items like the Real Action Heroes Homura, Yuno and uh yeah. Behind is the framed Pokemon Hanafuda card set that I got from the Pokemon Center in Tokyo. Moving on, we come to my doll and replica cabinets. The top 9 shelves are for dolls and the bottom 9 are for replicas. Starting from the top, we have Romando's Cure Black and White, a replica hand puppet of Midori from Midori no Hibi, A-Zone's 1 3rd scale Nagato Yuki and A-Zone's 1 6th scale Haruhi dolls. Some of these dolls and figures I do leave in the boxes most of the time, it's either due to the fact that I like the designs of the boxes or because they are usually limited edition or whatnot. Next, the 1-6 scale Mama Chap Lucky Star dolls followed by the 1-6 scale Azon Keon dolls. That is the legalized Madoka doll that Takara Tomi put out some time back and next to that is the Real Action Heroes Madoka doll. Homura will be joining her soon. And I do plan to fill in the shelf above her with the Real Action Heroes Nanoha dolls that will be released soon. The dolls to the right are exclusives, either event or magazine exclusives. They are A-Zone's Zange and Kanagi from Kanagi, a great slice of life show, if you can call it slice of life, and Konami's Asuna doll from Negima. 
can't really remember whether she was an exclusive or not. Lastly, we have more 1-6 scale A-Zone dolls from various series, including Anonatsu, Nanoha, Working, and Railgun. Next up are the replicas. The shelf is mainly dedicated to Steins Gate. We have a replica of Okabe Rintaro's phone that plays voice clips from the various characters in the show. I got it with the limited edition version of the PS3 game you see behind. We have the Labelman pin badges, die-cast metal Upa, Upas I got from last year's comic and a boxed Rhinet Access Battlers card game. Next to it are some Kyoto Animation related replicas from Haruhi, Lucky Star, Chunibyo and Nichijo, including Haruhi's Dancho Armband, her Dancho Pyramid Thingy, the Costed Omehani CD, Rika's Eye Patch, and Sakamoto's Scarf. On the right are a collection of replicas from the Real Dex franchise, though it looks more like a collection of Gekuta merchandise now that I think about it. The purse, tabletop mascot, arcade coins, indexes cross, judgment armband, finger puppets, straps, can badge, it's all there. Moving along, this is where I put the replicas, they don't have a place to go yet. We have the scissor blade and Mitsuboshi pin set from Kill la Kill, Rose Maiden pin set, and Gendo's glasses from Evangelion. Next is Jojo's stone mask, handkerchief, and plush frog, and to the extreme right is a collection of Madoka replicas, including Homura's glasses, a die-cast replica of Homura's soul gem, die-cast grief seeds, and a set of soul gems when they are in their magical girl forms. Right at the bottom are Kaiji replicas, including the original e-card set that came with the manga, a plastic e-card set in the case that is released to promote the live action movie and the restricted rock paper scissors cards. Lastly, the final two shelves are taken up by the Moe Moe Zukun and the Munya Munya Zuban from Akiba Rangers together with their SH figure arts figures. Right next to these cabinets is my main TV setup. Basically, it's my TV surrounded by figures. Starting with the two main shelves, we have my full Metal Panic shelf with all the Robot Damashis and the Chinori and Tessa trading figures, which I reviewed eons ago. Below that is a Code Gear shelf, more accurately a Cullen shelf, with the Mega House Cullen door as a centerpiece, a variable action Gurren Nishiki figure attacking Jeremiah's Nightmare, with the Chibi Arts Cullen and Plastic Model Gurren to the right. Behind them are several Tamashi Online Store exclusive Robot Tamashis, including Seeds' Akatsuki and Lancelot. Below that is my Evangelion shelf. These are the Robot Tamashis of the Evas from the new movie, and the SOC spec Evangelion figures. As I've mentioned in my review, these are the definitive Evangelion figures. Die-cast parts, removable armor, intricate gimmicks, these have them all. On the right is the Nerve Base playset and a music box made out to look like the no sound tablet that you see during the conference. We then come to the shelves that house figures from three of my personal favorite series, Nanoha, Haruhi and Lucky Star. They are pretty much all Figma figures, Nandroids and the like. Those packets at the back of the Nanoha shelf are replica ribbons that were released together with the first movie way way back. The first set of shelves on the right on my TV are all four Kamen Rider figure arts. The first one is rather random, you have Double Decade Kabuto O's Wizard and so on. Below that are for Fai's figure arts, including the Fai's Glow Stage version. That Otto Vagin is undeniably my favourite out of all of them. In fact, he's one of three. Yep, I have three of them. That's how much I love it. Rounding up the Kamen Rider figure arts is what will be my Gaim shelf. Really can't go wrong with a series written by the writer for Madoka, Psychopaths, and Fate Zero. Due to a lack of space, he's joined by Blade and Double for the time being. The last set of shelves on the right of my TV are for more replicas. The first of which is for Kaon. We have the Key Rings, Yui's Notebook, Yui's Mug, the My Love is a Stapler Stapler, yes, Pink Audio Cassette, Yui's Pencil Case, Aslian's Nekomimi and Teacup, and Nodoka's Glasses. Yeah, I do have a thing for red frame glasses, and if I'm not mistaken, even Nodoka from Negima also has red frame glasses. Uh, speaking of Negima, the next shelf contains several Negima replicas, many of which I've reviewed before. The commemorative plastic Pactio card set, including a number of plastic Pactio cards that you get with the special edition manga volumes. I also have the Ala Elba pin badge and the Mahora Gakuen student ID cards. To its right, and seemingly out of place, is the gorgeous Lancelot launch key USB flash drive that I've also reviewed before, and a core drill from Gurren Lagan. The last shelf is a Nanoha replica shelf with Bardish, Raising Heart, and Cloud Wind in standby form from the original series. 
We also have Raising Heart, Bardish, Swiss Cruise, or however you pronounce it, Levantine, and Gralf Eisen in standby form from the second movie. There is the Book of Darkness jacket cover and a replica framed photo of Faden and Anahas picture from the end of the first movie. Saw it in Mandarake when I went to Japan and I actually have no idea where it's from. Back to the middle of the wall which is arguably the focal point of my room, from the top is a phenomenal Lucky Star wall scroll featuring the entire main cast of characters. This wall scroll gets pride of place in my room as it's the series that got me back into anime and Japanese culture after a pretty long hiatus. On each side are Kujibiki Unbalanced posters, an homage to the posters that were seen in the Genshiken Club Room, of course from the superb Otaku University slice of life show Genshiken. And now onto my TV. On top of the Toshiba TV are a number of Precure Cure dolls from Hard Catch Precure and the original Precure series. You also have Groudon and Kyoga Toys. One of my favorite legendaries, or two of my favorite legendaries, I should say, from the Pokemon franchise. Below my TV is another random collection of figures. From the left, Bandai's DX Shogokin Macross Frontier Autos VF25F with Fast Pack, the Cannon Fodder VF171, a transformable Chibi VF25F, a Lucky Star Cross Macross Frontier Konata dressed as Aranka's phone, and the Lucky Star Cat S Icon. Several Evangelion trading figures, a pair of Prop Plus Code Gears figures, a Miku Nandroid, Griffin's Aya from Toho, Mega House's Ranka, Waves, Kagami, and Tsukasa Shrine Maiden figures with charms and wards that I got when I visited the Washinomiya Shrine. That Tomoki figure right in front is from Sora no Otoshimino, and he pairs with the Ikaros below, and the two Lucky Star figures on each side are trading figures. Continuing on, we have Mega House's Cheryl Gnome, Mameshiki Reimu, Griffin's Yomu, Nendroid Rin, Ichiban Kuji, Lucky Star Cross Macros Miyuki, dressed as Cheryl, and an SQ Prize figure of Cheryl dressed as Basara. I got that Miyuki figure because I found her cosplay to be rather interesting as the two characters actually share the same voice actress. Behind her is Yamato's VF-17S and Yamato's VF-19 Kai with sound booster attachment. The Basara, Milane and Flower Girl figures at its base are trading figures. Right at the end is the Dynamic Change Getter Robo figure in Getter 2 configuration. One shelf down and we begin with a random collection of small figures, be it Gashapon, Trading, Price or Ichiman Kuji figures. I don't think I'll be going through them all, so I'll just do a quick pan across. Behind though are full sets of Kujibiki Unbalanced, Sekire, Cardcaptor Sakura and Nichijo trading figures. On top of my cable set top box are a set of Petanko Matoka figures that have paired with the Soul Gem Light replicas. Behind them are a set of Chibi Sora no Otoshino figures produced by AmiAmi Ami themselves, and behind them still are two trading figure sets, the Witch Collection figures from Madoka and a set of Disgaea figures. To the right is the original Chogokin Combatler V that I got when I was really young, and another Ikaros figure in casual clothes. From here on out, it's kind of a Macross hanger with a number of Valkyries, from Yamato's V2 VF1S, V1 VF1A, V1 VF1D, Bandai's VF17S, Plastic Model VF25S, and Bandai's DX Shogokin VF27. There's a GNU Do YF21 figure and a Robot Tamashi Q Rare figure there as well. In front of them are the Fairies from Jinri wa Suitai Shimashita, another brilliant show. At the back are sets of Nandroid Petites, which I believe to be of far greater value for money than regular Nandroids. Uh, not sure how well it will come across on camera, but there's Madoka, Nanoha, Keon, and some of the Dengeki Bunko characters like Index, Taiga, Shana, Kino, and we also have Yuri and Tenshi from Angel Beats. There's also some long-expired UCC Evangelion coffee cans, and a couple of hybrid-grade uh, Kamen Rider figures that can interact with an AR app on smartphone. Further along the right, we have a Bandai reissue Takatoku VF1S, and a Monkode Zepdos figure, my favourite of the three legendary birds. In a continuation of that last shelf, there are more Nandroid Petite figures here, namely those from Macross, the secrets and exclusives from various sets, such as Tan's Azusa, Alicia, Watamote's Tomoko, and Churiya-san, and we also have a Dangan Rompa trading figure set. Next to it is the Tamashi Online Exclusive Cure Blossom Super Silhouette version, in box because the hard catch pre-cure SH figures aren't really the best of quality.
This windmill mascot character is from Kamen Rider Double, and it's a replica of the keychain that was featured in the series. These here are Sega Kuji Lucky Star figures, and these are MMS figures of the three main Sky Girls. Lastly, here's a mini display case that I've used to store my Konami Negima Figure Mate figures. Above this, we have a life-sized wall scroll of Cure Blossom. If I haven't already made this fact clear, I love Hard Catch Precure, and Cure Blossom has to be my all-time favourite cure. Accompanying it on its right are some framed pieces. From the top, a poster I received celebrating the anniversary of Saitama Press when I visited the Washinomiya Shrine about 4 years back. The two below are animation cells from Cardcaptor Sakura and Macro 7 of Sakura and Milane respectively. It's my good fortune that Haruhiko Mikimoto, the character designer for Macross and Macross 7, signed it for me when he came to give a guest lecture at my university. In the spirit of signed pieces, here are a number of printed signed boards that I received after watching the Magical Girl Lyrical Nanoha Ace movie and the Madoka movies respectively. Right next to it is a replica Keon school bag with a notepad and replica HTT t-shirt inside. With that, we've come to the next series of shelves. But before we move on, let me show you my plush toy collection. It's been hung all across the top of the wall. Most of them are by gift and are from the Nandroid Plus line. Going across it, we have the plush toys from Baka Test, Keon, Toho, Ki, Disgaea, To Love Ru, but I on I'd honestly rather say Black Cat, Angel Beats, Nanoha, Railgun, Hardcatch Precure, Steins Gate, and Madoka. I have left all of them in the plastic bags that they came in as they are far easier to hang up this way and it protects them from being coated by the dust in my room. Coming back to the shelves, once again from the top, we have all of the recent Transformers figures that date back to the first movie, which is when I got reacquainted with the franchise. It's kind of mixed up, but there are movie 1, 2, 3 and 4 figures along with animated, prime and generations figures. Unfortunately, most of my early Transformers figures like those from G2, Beast Wars and Beast Machines are all stored away in boxes somewhere. I don't think I own any G1 figures as that was way before my time. If uh, anime is my number one, Transformers is definitely my next favourite franchise. The next three shelves are all Kamen Rider related, the first of which is completely devoted to Kamen Rider Fives, my favourite Heisei Rider. Together with the Real Action Heroes Fives and Light Up Fives, I have the completed DX toy line with the Axel Watch, the Fives Edge, Fives Blaster, and all of the Fives, Kaiser, and Delta gear in custom replica gear boxes, pretty much using the exact same models of cases that were used in the show. To see what's inside, do check out my video on those. I even have a Smart Brain name card case there off to the side. Below that are mainly my Kamen Rider Blade DX toy collection, save for the Chalice, Wild Rouser and Langles toys. I don't have the replica Rouse card archives, but I do have complete sets of the scannable Rouse cards. To the right are some random Kamen Rider toys, including those from Deno, Decade and Hibiki. The third and final Kamen Rider shelf is definitely the busiest. My second favourite Rider series, not counting Kamen Rider Gaim as it's still ongoing, is Kamen Rider Double, and outside of the Candy and Gashapon toys, it's the only other Kamen Rider series that I've managed to complete. On the left, everything's there from the Lost Driver to the Fang Memory, and the A to Z capsule memories from the movie are hung all across the top of the shelf. Next to the double toys are the Kabuto, O's and Wizard toys. For Kabuto, I have the custom belt and clock up pad, so I'm really looking forward to the complete selection version to see if it will surpass its quality. And aside from the Gatek and Hopper Zector, it's pretty much complete too. For O's, I sold off all the DX medals when I managed to get the complete selection O medal set. And about Kamen Rider Wizard. The toys were cool, but I despised the latter half of the show so much that I sold off everything save the white wizard driver and a couple of rings. The last shelf in this section is my magical girl shelf, since card kept Sakura. Of course, we have the obligatory hard catch precure merchandise, which I've reviewed already, followed by a mix of precure merchandise from the other series, including Sweet, Smile, and the original precure. To the right are a couple of Sailor Moon merchandise. I have the recently released Miracle Romance Nail Polish set, the original Sailor Moon R Compact, which I still have from the time when I was a kid, yes, it still works, and the Proplica Moon Stick. 
I was quite a huge Sailor Moon fan back in the day, but for some reason, I have hardly any nostalgic feelings towards the franchise, hence my lack of merchandise. If we are talking about nostalgia, one of the series that would instantly come to mind is Akazukin Chacha. Playing on Cartoon Network back in the day, I loved Akazukin Chacha and I still love it today. Thanks to the power of the internet, I found out that there were actually toys released for the series and managed to track most of them down. They include the Beauty Serene Arrow, Bird Shield, Princess Medallion, and Wing Chris, which actually does have a transformation gimmick. I would have loved these to death if I had them back when I was a child, and I'm really glad that I have them today. Interesting fact, these toys were produced by Takara, which I believe is the same Takara that forms one half of Takara Tomi. Sticking with the theme of nostalgia, the reason I don't display my Card Captor Sakura merchandise together with the other Magical Girl items is because my CCS collection gets its own display case. One of my favorite Magical Girl shows of all time, I spent no expense tracking down all the toys when I had the means to do so after being only able to look at them through a computer screen when I was younger. Since my Star Wars review, it has grown significantly and I pretty much have completed the entire line of toys except for the dolls. On the first shelf, I have the 1999 release of Sakura, Tomoyo and Lee, with a 2004 release of Sakura in her first opening outfit at the back. There are a couple of small uh, plush Kiro and Sleepy toys in front, and right in front is a 2004 release Sakura in her sailor uniform that I've customized with an articulated Obitsu doll body. The next shelf greets us with all the Cloud Book and Card sets. We have the 1999 Cloud Book, Sakura Book and Sakura Card Set, second movie version. At the back is the 2004 re-release of the Cloud Card Set, Mint in Sealed Box, which I've heard is one of the rarest to get, despite being the newest. In the foreground are two copies of the Kodansha Cloud Cards. I've had the misfortune of owning a bootleg set once, and I've since managed to track down two sets, one opened first print and one unopened one. We then come to the wands and the other electronic toys. We have, first and foremost, the very first replica cloud wand that was released in 1998. It is 1-1 scaled, unlike the latter releases, has a switch that allows you to switch between the two available voice clips, and comes with a die-cast replica cloud key. It is in near perfect condition with the box and everything, and it was undeniably the hardest to get out of all of them. Next to it is the Talking Kiro plush that not only has the voice clips of Kiro, but it also has a function that allows you to record your own voice and play back in Kiro's voice. Honestly, it doesn't work too well. Beneath it is the 2004 re-release of the Cloud Wand, and in front of that is the original 1999 release. The Star Wand is next to it, and right in front are a couple of lesser known electronic toys. Tomoyo's phone that actually has the ability to randomly generate voice clips of many of the characters, and a light up cloud key that is horrendously out of scale. To round things off right on top, we have the recently released Card Captor Sakura prize figure. Takara Tomi will be making a pair of new dolls of Sakura herself this month, and I'm really looking forward to adding those to my display. Speaking of making a comeback, another anime franchise that I have an exceedingly strong nostalgic attachment for is Digimon, and it gets its own display case as well. The four shelves are divided into the four seasons of Digimon that I grew up with, and considered to be the golden age of Digimon before the hiatus. I mainly try to focus on the toys released in the Japanese market, with the exception of the US Beelzemon figure, as it's pretty damn good. From the top, I have the recently released completed PVC figures of Taichi slash Tai and Yamato slash Matt. Really wish they would put out some of the female characters, especially Sora and Ruki slash Rika. But that's just me. It's above a mint and sealed box Japanese version of the Digivolving Omegamon, one of the hardest figures to get in my collection. Not only was it a limited release, the pearl white material that it's made out of is exceedingly brittle, meaning to say that any figure that's second hand is pretty much guaranteed to be broken. So that will remain in box for some time to come. To the sides are figures of the human characters that I believe were from the US toy line. For some reason, I'm missing Mimi. Going shelf by shelf, season by season, here we have the toys from Digimon Adventure, Digimon Adventure 02, Digimon Tamers, and Digimon Frontier. Right at the back of each shelf, I have the Digivice that came out for that particular season. Most of them still in box, save for the D-Scanner. Unfortunately, I'm still behind on my Digivice collection, and I don't have the ultimate versions yet. 
the Japanese armor Digivolving figures will be going into the O2 shelf once I'm done with the reviews. To the right of the Nostalgia Details are a number of mini drawers that contain mostly accessories and parts, from Figma accessories to excess Kamen Rider belt parts. I highly recommend these for organization purposes when your collection gets too large. Ziploc bags are really useful for separating accessories within each drawer. Moving further back into the room is my bookshelf. On here I've attempted to organize them by shelf once again. Before that though, on the top is a little shrine to Isamu and Macross Plus, with Yamato's VF-11, YF-19 and Bandai's YF-29. That Isamu is a trading figure. Books wise, I have English and Chinese translated manga on the top shelf, followed by original Japanese manga and light novels. Those box files contain all the loose papers and documents, for instance pamphlets, instruction booklets, and the like. For the next two shelves, I have setting material and art books, though the organization could use a little more work. As you can see, they've begun to spill over into a shelf meant for Kamen Rider books. Down here are the magazines that I've bought mainly for the figures and accessories that come with them, and they're together with the special editions of manga that again come with figures. Right below is my doujinshi and Edo manga shelf, together with all the game guides I bought before I got acquainted with the internet. That is a Comic Cat catalog, and below that is the Ucho Tenkazuku setting material that I got from last year's Winter Comic Cat that I have yet to open. This is the door leading to my bathroom slash storeroom, which I've covered with a ton of posters. We have the Singapore version of the Madoka movie poster, the Sora no Otoshimo no movie poster, a Fripside sign poster, a Steinsgate poster that came with the PS3 game, a little Miyakawa Ke no Kufuku clear file, an infinite stratos table mat that I got at the Good Small Cafe, and a ton of my old Yu-Gi-Oh posters that I've had since primary school. Behind it is my stash of unopened figures. As a fan of procrastination, these are where all the figures hang out in review limbo. I either get off my butt to review them, or open them for play and display when too much time has passed. Not a very healthy work ethic. Turning around and making our way back to the front of the room, the top two shelves are for some limited edition figures that I display in box for no particular reason. Magazine exclusive Swimsuit Mikoto, Read or Die Anita, Dojin Work Tsuyuri, Figma Archetypes, SH Figards Auto Vagin No. 2, an exclusive Arsenal Figure Mate, and Figma's Kururugi Suzaku, Shana, Konata Cosplay Version, Hirasawa Ui, Manabe Inodoka, and Brave Haruhi. Below that is my disc media collection that I've separated into several piles. Japanese box sets and limited edition sets, Japanese single volumes, R1 US releases, games and audio CDs. Even lower still are all my English movies, but we are not here for those. I personally favor the Japanese releases of anime because getting the US releases of Japanese anime is kind of like getting the Japanese releases of Hollywood movies. It just doesn't really make any sense to me. We then round the corner and arrive at my new desk setup that I plan to use for reviews and work. Right up top is a small collection of super robots from various franchises, mainly the Brave series and Super Sentai. My collection is actually much, much larger and these are some I picked out to fill in the space. I've had them since I was exceedingly young and sad to say that most of them are in a pretty sorry state due to the fact that when you're a kid, you don't really care about losing accessories, scratching paint or even taking the batteries out. The next shelf is my random shelf where I put on display figures that don't really fit into any other shelf in the room. Not going to name everything, but you have stuff from Marvel Legends, Adventure Time, Dino Zone, Animorphs, Beast Machines, Axel World, Pokemon, Code Geass, Tiger and Bunny, Gurren Lagan, Evangelion, Sky Ghost, Giver, and Kamen Rider Shin. I've also hung the panty and stocking figures on the support pillar to the right, as it's the kind of packaging that you have to destroy to get into. As mentioned previously, this is my new desk that I've already started using since my last review. On the shelf behind, I've placed several items that seem to look great in box. We have the Dengeki Bunko 20th Anniversary Heroine Figure Collection. It contains 20 Nintendo figures from 20 Dengeki Bunko franchises and includes a guidebook. I love many of the franchises and the presentation is simply impeccable, so I couldn't pass this set up. Next to it is the Keon Petite set with a diorama that was from an Ichiban Kuji set. Behind it is the 10th anniversary pre-card collection that features all 8 of the previous lead cures. Next to that is the two dynamic change Getter Robo figures that have been released thus far. Brilliant figures in terms of their engineering and their packaging is both unique and eye-catching. 
there's my fake voice clock, and last but not least is my original ROTF Prime, along with the commemorative Comic 85 drink bottles that I got each time I went to Comic -Ed. This display is dynamic, so it won't remain the same for long. Right in front is my old MacBook Pro, and to my right are all the miscellaneous bits and bobs, and the back of my PC, but we'll be getting to that in just a little bit. Below the table are more stuff that I haven't had the time or mind to do a proper review on, including the merchandise I got when I attended the Nanoha Movie Second Movie Premiere. Also, there are my external hard disks that are plugged into my PC. If you've been wondering where all my completed PVC figures are, they are next to my bed facing the TV setup, having an entire wall to themselves. It's not really organized in any way, as you shall soon see. The top shelf is for Yu-Gi-Oh! And as a diehard fan of the original series, I was ecstatic when Kotobukiya released figures of the main characters and monsters. The god monsters are from a US toy line and go great with them. Below that is a cold gear shrine where I've laid out all the robot damashis of the nightmares of the three main characters, Suzaku, Karen, and Drush. To the right are the X-Star Fate, Movic Fate, Movic Nanoha, Nodoka from Saki, GSC's Nanoha, and X-Star Nanoha. Next is Beach Queen's Mikoto, Eve from Black Cat, Four Leaves Mikoto Swimsuit and Maid, Prize Figure Kalen, Musubi from Sekirei, Asuna from Negima, Yomi from Gare Zero, Bandai's Kalen from Code Geass, A Fate Prize Figure, Izumi from He Is My Master, Swimsuit Nagi from Wave, and Iria and Mew Prize Figures. Coming down to the bottom half from the very left, we have Read or Die prize figures with Yomiko Reedman by Kotobukiya, Louise Bastia version, Emma Ai from Hell Girl, Swimsuit Shana, Bakatesk's Minami and Mizuki, Alters Yuki, Ichika from Anonatsu, Yoko and Nia from Guren Lagen, Rin Unlimited Blade Works version, Saber Triumphant Excalibur version, Akarin from Yuru Yuri, Kagura from Gare Zero, Mirakurun from Yuru Yuri, Chitori and Tessa from Full Metal Panic with Alters ARX7 Arbliss in the background, Ogiwe from Genshiken, Yozora from Haganai, Kuroneko from Ore no Imoto, and a Merun Android. Second to last shelf, we have Ikaros from Sora no Otoshino, Minami from Manabi Street, Alters Banigo Kalen, Alters Haruhi, Samaki from Bamboo Blade, GSC's Mikuru Combat Waitress version, Tony's Miku, Mina from Densha Otoko, GSC's Homura, Prize Figure Madoka, Christmas Yui, and Ayu from Canon. Figures of the four railgun protagonists, Cure Black and White by Mega House, Fio from Metal Slug, Tenshi from Angel Beats, Shinobu from Bakimonogatari, Vita from Nanoha, and lastly, Lelouch from Code Geass. The lower shelf contains all my other figments and posable action figures. The Belka Knights from Nanoha, Movie Haruhi, SH Figure Arts Cure Black and White, right in front is an extra Nandroid Petite Mummy, being chased by an Ichiban Kuji Charlotte figure. Gary Zero Figmas, Kaon Figmas, a couple of Madoka Figmas, Revoltech Krauser from DMC, and the Railgun and Index Figmas. Lastly, we have the BRS Figma, Figmas Rin and Saber, Figma Samus, Figma Shana, Figma Lelouch, the Evangelion Girls, Figma Makina, Figma Reimu, Figma Mikuru Cheerleader version, Figma Kagami Miku Cosplay version, Mobib Rin from Little Busters, Figma Tsuriya Festival version, Sword Art Online Figmas, and a small collection of Jojo's Super Action Statues. To each side of the shelves, there are more wall scrolls. On the left is a gorgeous fate wall scroll from one of the comic and to the right are Ryogan and Kotonoha wall scrolls. Below the shelves are drawers that I use to put more accessories and keep all of my trading card related items. Right below the Fate Testerosa wall scroll, we have my Keon Clock, framed Horakti Yu-Gi-Oh card and powerpoints with my PSP and 3DS. This is where I hang my phone pouch and this is my tiny collection of straps and keychains. Moving further along, we come to my PC, but before that, above it are even more figures of course. Uh, one for scale Bunny Girl Mikuru from Freeing, Figma Mikuru Combat Waitress version in a nod to Konata, Sega Lucky Star Kuji Tsukasa Festival version, Alter's Fate, my Yui voice clock, SH Figuarts Cure Dream, and Arcadia's YF19, VF1S, and Yamato's YF21, my all-time favorite Valkyrie. Even further down is my one-third scale Fate Test Rosa doll that I worked almost a year to save up for, and above it are the stackable Misaka Mori figures along with the SRHF Autovagin and Side Basha. Coming back to my PC, if you're interested, here are some specs. 
It's a Cost S 760T case, i7-4790, Z97 gaming motherboard, 16GB of RAM, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 780 graphics card, 2 internal SSDs, 2 internal HDDs, and 12 USB ports. Below it, I've connected my PS3 to the monitor, and it's exceedingly convenient and efficient system, if I do say so myself. You can also see some more anime Blu-ray box sets and PS3 games that I happen to be watching and playing during this past holiday. You can actually see a tiny bit of me in one of the specials in the Nanoha Movie second BD box set, the one where they covered the premiere event. Speaking of the monitor, the monitor that I'm using is an Asus MX279 H 27 inch monitor that looks simply gorgeous, both image and aesthetics wise. Speakers are Ego M and the OS for the PC is Windows 7 Professional. I'm pretty sure you've noticed that the monitor is on my bed. While it makes it unbelievably troublesome to change the sheets, I have it set up this way because I like to surf the net, watch videos and game while lying down. On the plank that I use as a base are some figures that I'm currently keeping my hands busy with. Uh, we have the Ku Pochi Madoka, Mami and Mikoto. The Ku Pochis are far better chibi figures in androids in my humble opinion. A couple of TF4 toys and of course also Vagin number 3 with SH Figuarts 5s. Here's a little clan -like clock that I kept for years and there's the Pot of Greed for obvious reasons. There's the Akiba with giant lolly diorama vigilant figure that was produced by Kyodo, the same company that produced the Re Revotech figures, that comes with an otaku academic book. Very apt figure that kind of encapsulates a ton about otaku culture, and that's why I have it right in front of my monitor. Next is a uh, Konata Nandroid Petite and Misaka Sisters Nandroid Petite with trading figure. We're in the home stretch now and to the left of my monitor is a Yui mug with all the essential stationery, including the same model of mechanical pencil that Ritsu uses. Further left still are all the Gaim toys that I'm currently messing about with. Once the show is over, they'll probably join the rest of my Kamen Rider collection in the back. Due to its awesomeness, both in terms of show quality and toy design, this is the third ever Kamen Rider toy line that I'm going to complete. More of the roleplay toys are over there in the corner. There's also the Happiness Charge Precure, Prechange Mirror and Card File. At the edge of my bed are some trays that I use to store more essentials. Starting from right behind my monitor are some documents and files, including the QNE Keon Card Collection, Clear Files, Autograph Collection, Film Strips and Ticket Stubs from the movies that I saw in Japan. Following that, we have my electronic toy collection, like my other Digivices and Pokédexes. Below a tray of unsorted figures is a box that contains all the handheld games and devices from the Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance SP, DS and DS Lite. Next is a box of more stationery and here are all the Gaim AC figures including the Suica arms that will go into a shelf when the series is over. Dymo for labeling things, my PS Vita, batteries, backup hard disks, my camera, fire extinguisher in case of emergencies, really important, straps and miscellaneous items, and the O2 armor digivolving figures out of their boxes. I actually found my old set and currently I have two complete sets. It might take a while but they'll be on this channel eventually. Last but not least, this is the second set of the Soul Gem Light replicas with a darker gold paint scheme. And with that, we've come one complete round and that brings us to the end of our tour. I really think I need to get a drink before my voice gives out from all this talking. Just as a little bonus, here is my box collection. As with most collectors, I don't throw away any of the boxes in the event I want to sell any of my figures or decide to pack them away for storage. Unlike some collectors however, I personally view the boxes as works of art and part of the figure and throwing them away would be tantamount to throwing away an accessory. In conclusion, I hope you guys enjoyed this video as it has been in the works for quite some time. While different people collect for different reasons, I collect figures because I love anime. Not only do I buy the figures to show my support for the series, I see them as 3D representations of the characters that I love. Therefore, more so than anything else, it has been exceedingly emotionally fulfilling. However, I have to admit that I have been slowing down and have been more selective of the stuff I buy. One of the reasons being a lack of space as you might have noticed. Another reason being the fact that, as you grow as a fan, you aren't that easily impressed by just any anime anymore and you don't get as emotionally attached anymore. Still, I will continue loving and supporting anime for as long as possible as its effect on my life has been overwhelmingly positive, save for its impact on my bank account. So, the Zekta saying, 
See you guys in the next episode and who knows how my room will look like in the future.